Go, Jason, take us in. Or it James, was James, sorry. you son of a bitch. Hey, everyone, <laughs> welcome to the episode. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> you fucked up my fake name. Um, hello, everyone, welcome to episode 298 of the official podcast. This is James here, uh, brand new host of the official podcast. Thanks for uh, having me, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, what's been going on in your neck of the woods? James is curious to know. There's too uh, many well, things. Very sad. Yeah, week. it's big. So many things. So many fucking topics. Oh come on, guys! Don't big bold James. I came here for a show. You, ja- you're gonna put right, one James, on for me. James, as your celebratory introductory to the show, why don't you pick the first person to bring up a topic this week? Ooh, okay. Um, well, I, James doesn't know you guys all too well, so I don't know who would have the most interesting topics. But I'm gonna assume that it's you, Andrew. No, no. So what is, uh, fill me in. What, what is this James bit? What do you it's mean? James. Bit? Uh, you know, James this up. Okay, I, okay, I just hang got on. confused. Let's, hang on, let's just all stop recording here. Charlie, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Seriously. He's, I was playing, I was He's playing big the dick and James. The James doesn't appreciate guy. that. Yeah. We uh, rehearsed we to this. go to HR again. We rehearse this show three days a week before we go on air, and you seriously, like, pull this shit now? Are you kidding? Yeah, I'm sorry, boys. You need to lay off the coke, bro. James doesn't appreciate being treated like this on his first episode. James, I am so sorry. This is- we are usually much more professional than this. I am- again, I'm really sorry. I'm going back to the misfits. Fuck this show. (laughs) (laughs) All right, uh, what do you have for us, Andrew? All right, if that's so your real I'll, name. I had two topics, and I'll pull this first one out because Kaya, before the show, you also seem to have something to say on this. Uh, algorithm recommendations are getting really bad, and it's not necessarily out of inaccuracy. It's I'm tired of being recommended the same shit over and over again, even when I'm searching for something else. I went on YouTube the last couple days and I thought I'd try yoga. So I was like, I'm, I'm having some stiffness, some pain. I want to stretch more. I'll do some yoga. So, you know, obviously men and women, different levels of flexibility, different targeted areas, different whatever. Men's yoga, women's yoga, very different. So I searched men's yoga and it recommended me this one channel and it recommended three videos from this one channel. And I went, okay, those seem a little advanced. I want a little more beginner friendly. Let me keep searching. And YouTube, I swear to God, nine out of 10 results were this one channel. So I tried one of the videos and I watched it and I didn't care for it. I was like, this is too advanced, not my thing. But then because YouTube saw I watched one of them, it replaced everything with recommendations from that channel. So now I'd search anything related like beginner yoga, 10 minute yoga, yoga for dummies, like unrelated stuff. I even (laughs) searched women's yoga at one point and it still brought up this one channel and it wouldn't stop it's just it's maddening and then you go to youtube and i typed in totally something totally unrelated i think i looked up like yakuza gameplay related to one of the games i'm playing and after 10 results it goes here's more videos recommended for you and it was men's yoga what does this have to do with that <laughs> what the fuck that's never stop to me. recommending me this and it's just YouTube everywhere broken. now what it's no he's right. Right. Is he suggesting so, yoga it's suggesting yoga even when i search for non-yoga related things it won't Can you stop. click on the little button and say like stop uh so it doesn't help it'll just recommend uh, a different video from dude, the it same doesn't channel. help yeah it's still recommend i have the same experience man like uh, i told you guys a couple of weeks ago i read installed all of my computer operating systems and shit so you know how when you first open the browser that you like and you go to youtube and you have to log in and shit to get your subscriptions back i i usually never see the front page of youtube my god is it a fucking toilet dude i couldn't log in fast enough (laughs) it's just mainstream media stuff that's all it's 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 definitely no it's not mainstream media stuff it's even worse it's the dumbest mainstream fucking slop it's just like main minecraft streamers doing the dumb soy face and the thumbnails and a million of them and then like jackson says you have to click the three little buttons 
to say don't recommend this i at this point i give like every video that i accidentally even see a thumbs down that i watch because i don't want to watch more of it there's like, no so amount of like stop rec uh, re recommending this that you could do on the front page to get rid of that though it's no. like built, it's baked into the I front know. page of youtube i know so what i do now i only have the subscriptions page bookmarked and i never stray from it i only look at my subscriptions and that's it my biggest problem with youtube is that you can't find anything anymore it's all commentary shit it's all reactions and i know you youtubers or streamers or what the fuck you guys had like this drama about commentary channels or reaction channels or something right charlie wasn't that a whole yeah, thing? Yeah, it's a very contentious topic, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have nothing against them. Like, whatever, if I upload a video, someone else gets a comment on it. That's just a fucking deal on the internet. I don't, like, I don't. I really don't see why someone gets to forever. complain that fucking yeah. much. It's like, yeah, it's fair game. But I just wish when I search for something that the video that I'm looking for is the first result. Rather than 27 fucking commentary channels with these assholes and their dumb fucking faces on top of the video that I'm trying to watch. It's so annoying. Like, at least make it a separate category in the search, or at least prioritize the original content over the reactions. At this yeah, point, I think like, the original content of... should be uh, prioritized over reactions. I agree. Stuff. And it should definitely be prioritized over these men's yoga videos. It's, it's just, it <laughs> That's the stop. hierarchy of things. It won't stop. I, I mean it. Usually the original is prioritized. Like, what, what were you looking for, Kaya? No, I anything, just anything, particular. anything. Like if you see a news article on YouTube, like whatever person rages in Seven uh, Eleven and has the cops called on them or something, and you type it into fucking YouTube, and it's you find what you're looking for, you find the specific news that you're looking for, but the first hundred results are just these assholes commenting on it. Like I don't give a fuck what Destiny has to say about this or Hassan or whatever the fuck. Fuck you. Like, I just want the video, and it's gotten so bad that I don't even bother with YouTube anymore. I go straight to Twitter or something, because it's much easier Twitter to look for something. Twitter is the most reliable place. Yeah, it's so you know reliable why? Because to find what you're looking for. Yeah. On Twitter, people, they still add their commentary, but at least they add it as text to their tweet rather than into the yeah. fucking video. Yeah, they don't it's break up the actual on content. YouTube, man. What, how, do you, how do you find stuff on Twitter, though? I feel like the only way I find stuff on... In. Well, Twitter's Search. actually really good at promotion, too. When I log on to Twitter, even with when it's from people I don't follow, it's usually on my front page stuff that's trending and really what people give a shit about and are talking about. Yeah, Twitter search uh, works, know. dude. It's, uh, Twitter actually has a really good search function with a lot of advanced functionalities, like... Search by users, search who's tagged, by timeline, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, by time range, I mean. It's good, it's so, just YouTube is such a fucking piece of shit now. Maybe I'm just not creative. Now. I I'll feel like I've never guys, had luck searching stuff through Twitter. I'll give you guys another great example of what I'm talking about. So I just went on my YouTube account just now, and I typed in video games. Just just to see what come up, the word video games. And the I first, wonder who would ever search that. Well, like, just, just, by, I'll search Minecraft. It I doesn't matter. I want to see some video games. It doesn't matter. Here, I'll I'm type in, in the mood for some video game <laughs> yeah. videos today. Nothing in particular, <laughs> just some video game content. It doesn't. So, so here, I'll give you a great example. Okay, I typed Minecraft just to really prove my point. And it's like you scroll down and it gives you Minecraft recommendations. Like here's a Let's Play. Here's the official Minecraft channel. Here's a challenge, this and that. But then... When you get halfway down, it hits people also watched. Like, like after like six or seven results, and it's just not even related to Minecraft. Like one, here's the Dragon Ball Fortnite announcement. Here's one of my <laughs> own videos. Like what does this have to do with Minecraft? Here's parkour in Among Us. What does well, this have to video do with games. Minecraft? Those are all well, video games. Minecraft. Uh, yeah. Here's if I take Okay, that is Minecraft. Never mind. But my point is, like, a good chunk of these videos have nothing to do. Here's Mr. Bean animated. What does this have to do with Minecraft? Well, you, you haven't watched it yet. Yeah. Mr. Bean was a oh, big fuck. Minecraft. He goes to no, Minecraft. You're right. You're right. Fair. Fair. My my <laughs> point is that Minecraft. my point is that it takes no more than like ten scrolls, ten scrolling past videos to start getting completely unrelated shit. And when I'm looking for a specific video. For whatever reason, it's a pain in the ass because you just know you have 10 videos to find it and then you're fucked. And you it'll just, just recommend random shit. You just disproved your point though. I was expecting to hear like a list full of yoga videos, but that doesn't sound like there was one <laughs> yoga video in that. Well, I had it's one when so much video games shit. came up, but then Charlie made me search Minecraft. 
It's just so much <laughs> shit, though. Like, I assume this is to bait little kids into, like, if you're a 12 year old and you type in Minecraft and you see, oh, ML this parkour map. I want to watch that too. Mm -hmm. And then they do, and the fucking platform makes money. By the way, I, like, again, I'm good at social media, but sometimes you do notice that these people really do want you to be miserable. I have a public Twitter account and I also have a private one where I only follow my friends and cats, okay? Nothing else. And still, my recommended tweets, you know that shit where they do like, oh, you might be interested in this topic. And then you look at the topic and it's just the most miserable fucking polit political news. It's like, no, no, -uh. I never followed any political news on this account. I, I never liked the tweet of such degree. I only look at cat videos. Why are you shoving this in my face and telling me to watch this shit? It's <laughs> annoying. I, I want to make it clear, I understand why YouTube and these websites are doing this, how they want tangentially related content, because it does keep you on the site, and, like, I get how you, Among Us would parallel Minecraft, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, but it, it's just annoying, you know, it's, it's just fucking obnoxious, especially when you want specific videos that you're looking for and you can't find them because it's just more trash. That's how all. do you guys how do you guys use YouTube because I don't think I've ever actually gone to the front page and interacted with the front page no, other than no, like laughing same. at it no, I don't know who, years, I don't yeah. know who does that because I always go to YouTube <laughs> with a like a distinct thing in mind you know I go to watch same. something I, I use it the particular. same way I think we all do we I assume we all use YouTube the same way we use Reddit in which we don't use it but sometimes you punch in a very specific question into Google and then you mm -hmm. add reddits because you want an answer to like a tech yeah. question. That's how I use YouTube, at least. It's like tutorials and such. My, um, my book, I just look for goofy shit. My bookmark in my or browser that. for YouTube is directly linked to the subscriptions page. Oh yeah, subscription I, page. Yeah. I literally yeah. don't even look at the front page anymore. So anytime I go to YouTube, I check subscriptions I like, see if they have anything new. And then, you know, if not, I'll look up stuff I'm interested in, like documentaries or yeah, like random questions on Google. Stuff like then that. Then who, who the fuck is interacting with the front page? I don't know. It just know, has to be people that don't have an account, yeah. would be my and, guess. And that's like, a lot people... of views, too. Those accounts yeah, that get featured on the front page get shitloads of views. Normies so. and dummies, bro. I don't know who else. It just... Let's see, how do you even go to the front page? Is it the home button or the explore one? Which one is it? Explore takes you to trending, I think. Which isn't even trending, it's just YouTube curated videos. Uh, yeah, true. Trending is uh, a tab in there you can click. Yeah. yeah, if you just go to explore, it's just like a random assortment of shit. Right now, it's all Fortnite. If you want, you know, if you want random recommended YouTube videos, you go to the home page. But if you want other random ended, random recommended YouTube videos, you click the trending page. It's a new I, my list. trending is the most random shit. I, I don't understand. It's all Spanish. <laughs> Maybe it's the VPN I'm using. This is bizarre. It's just it's soccer and Spanish music videos. Oh, and of course, fucking Mr. Beast doing the soy face. See, like, even in between all this shit, who uses this garbage? Kids. Millions of people. Probably kids. Millions yeah, of I mean, kids. You're both right, yep. yeah. <laughs> yeah, millions of kids. I saw a really depressing news. Um, I don't know how true it is. I think some people were disputing it, but apparently a lot of kids are now using TikTok as a search engine rather than Google. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. How does that yeah, even work? Well. Well, so if you have a question like, I don't know, whatever the fuck kids ask, how, how do water balloons work, I guess? You type it into TikTok instead of Google and you watch a little TikTok instead of reading do you really? Yeah, do you really some need... Pedophile teaches you how to do it. Do you really need an <laughs> egotistical 16-year-old girl doing an ass dance to go, this is how the Byzantine Empire was formed? Uh, so I can tell you're a little outdated on TikTok. Right Probably. now, the big trend is, whatever the video is, they play a smaller video underneath it where it's a, like a squeezing slime or something in order to keep attention. That's pathetic. So, yep, no matter what <laughs> video like you're hypnosis. watching... Yep, no matter what video you oh, watch man. right now, there's it's like split ho horizontally, so the top half is the video that you like you thought you were going to watch, and underneath it they have like squeezing slime or peeling soap is like a satisfying thing to keep your attention. The oh, one yeah. oh, that I knew God. was big and is probably still big is where you take a video that's mildly interesting, mildly funny, maybe, I don't know, somewhat clever, and you split it with your face, and the video's playing, and you just sit there and go, oh, that's not right. 
Oh, that's bad. Yeah, I hate those. Oh, two. I the hate that. Ones. The, I'm gonna TikTok. scream at that. Like that, that's that's, that's classic though. What what Charlie's explaining sounds almost dystopia. Like why not? Yeah. It might as well have like a black and white spiral that's just swirling, you know, and hypnotizing God. you. Are, are they yeah. gonna bring yeah, this to the workplace at some point? So some lady <laughs> sitting in a cubicle, alphabetizing like insurance claims. She's like, ah, oh, look at the slime. Mm -hmm, yeah, fire insurance burnt down. It's like, ugh. This it's it's gotten really bad like almost every tiktok now that i've seen and i don't go on there often just when there's like a freak out or something mm -hmm. has that fucking like squeezing of slime or something right underneath <laughs> it it's so fucking how many, so how many times do you think you've been slime. squeezed charlie <laughs> it's where they a, take I mean, your video and squeeze you or something well they, they don't do that though because it's only like the satisfying stuff where mm. it's like peeling soap or something like it's uh, only satisfying you... for the first time though who wants to watch slime being like caressed endlessly i know what it looks like by that point it's not satisfying anymore it's you know just what, slime you know what makes me really sad when i think about it and, and granted the younger generation has everything better than us they do they have more technology more knowledge more everything but when yeah, we the talk, entertainment is clearly far superior. Well, that's where I was going with this. <laughs> that's, when, that's where I was going. When we talk about nostalgia of the internet, we're like, oh, I miss these Newgrounds cartoons, and oh, these fun little videos, and oh, this shit was cool, this browser flash game, the oh, line rider, all that shit, that was great. What are the kids of y next year going to be talking about? Dude, remember that nostalgic video where that guy squeezed the fucking foam? while the president was talking. That was the best thing I'd ever seen. I fucking loved it well, and miss it. So you're already just not getting it. So like to a kid, the video is, do you remember when the guy did a BMX trick on TikTok? And the video, when you click on it, also has the squeezing of like spongy bread underneath so it. So why, yeah. why is the squeezing spongy bread there then? Just well, to make sure their attention is captured. So like the spongy bread is there, it's for like, yeah, it's like a I safety don't know, making sure you stay. Yeah. So what are they nostalgic over? The spongy bread or the BMX the, trick? The BMX, but the BMX they trick. How would they the watch the BMX bread. trick if the spongy bread is there? See, okay, so the spongy uh, bread is uh, just a side dish. <laughs> this is so exactly. confusing. You're not, you're, you're just not. You're not getting it, Andrew. The kids of today need constant stimulation. Yeah. So if the video has even a yeah. split second of downtime, they'd look below to see that bread being it's stuck. It's pure sensory around. overload then. Exactly. That's pathetic. Holy shit. No, it's super, super dystopian, honestly. <laughs> I wish I could find some good examples, but uh, oh, I'm man. having a hard time finding this it on the like If you can't Fahrenheit find it, then it, 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 Jesus Christ. If you can't find any good examples, it can't be that common then. No, it's, it is super common, but it's like tutorials for kids, and I don't know what they're trying to learn these days. I, I guess I, I know one person in particular who does it pretty often. His name's Sneeko. Let me see if I can find it. I'll just go on Twitter. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Tutorials for kids is a pretty scary term when it's coming from TikTok. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. fucked up. They should not be do you uh, think educating any, people. Do you think any people who make that stuff think that they're like actually impactful with their content or making really yeah, good quality stuff? Yeah, I'm sure they trick stuff? themselves yes, into thinking that. Absolutely. But, oh god, no. Absolutely. I don't see how you they could trick themselves into it. thinking that they're like thought leaders and shit. So many people on there. Oh, the fucking WHO is on TikTok. Ugh. What, did they have like an influencer squad at the WHO? They tell you about COVID while they squish bread. <laughs> they actually do, yeah. They have a bunch of just people talking into the camera. And, and at like, the bottom, yeah, fucking... Stupid backgrounds. At the bottom, the Surgeon General is just mashing grapes close up with his feet. <laughs> Good lord. This pisses me off. Like, I hate this. Oh, here we go, here we go. Here, here. this is a good example. Oh, but the video's not playing. Well, that's not very satisfying. Okay, well, Okay, well here, You've already lost I'll my... send it anyway so you can at least get the visual. This is like a, a comedy sketch. I think this is Bert. Yeah, Bert Kreshner. So like they'll have the, the Bert Kreshner special playing on top and underneath is an oddly satisfying thing. I think that one's like, a, I don't know, like some kind of gel being pushed mm. in or something. So they shit. steal oh content. God. They that makes steal sense content because and, I, and they I, I add mean, their own say... spin to it. Out of the okay. two between like Jello getting squished and Burt Crusher, the Jello is far more entertaining. That man is such a fucking <laughs> joy killing suck of fun. E either way, I, the issue Ugh. here is oh my god, I'm speechless. This is the most sad and pathetic thing I've seen in a long time. Well, maybe I wish well, the video would play. I don't right, know. Well, Holy uh, shit. Well, it's an image, it's not a video. <laughs> it's an image. <laughs> 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 Wow. <laughs> I was sitting here clicking the fuck out of it. 
Jesus, you're becoming a boomer. Oh. Hey, so my, well, I didn't have an oddly satisfying you know, sponge yeah, underneath maybe, it to show me how it works. Maybe, Danny, for this podcast, while we're talking, for the video version, just in the middle of the screen the entire time, just put some yeah. videos of, like, people popping stuff, some, like, people mashing Ooh, yeah, bread, yeah. Oh, some, yeah. some syrup was, being, like, displaced, just for yeah. the whole podcast. See if our views go up. See if I it was works. Gonna, I was going to recommend instead putting a Burt Kreshner video over playing <laughs> as well. He's just doing his stand up in a tiny yeah. box the whole time we're talking. <laughs> Maybe that's what the slime video did. They had the really good slime video, but then they realized they needed Bert Kreshner. God so damn. they put that on top. I, I hate to be a fucking boomer who is always like, this new generation, it sucks, and what we had was the best. Because like, yeah, there's a lot of advantages of the modern world, but entertainment is very, truly fucking sinking fast. Oh my god. Uh, entertainment's been fluctuating for decades. It's never been. Yeah, that's it's just true. You have to fight so hard for people's time now, since there's so many options. So they're doing everything they can to keep eyes on it. So like true. satisfying videos underneath and shit. Oh boy, that's yeah. Just we have sing a cell. Collectively, we have become boomers though. Over these last few weeks, I feel like we've been the angry old man uh, shouting at the clouds meme. I'm not. I'm not even angry. I think it's. I think it's fine. I don't give a fuck. It well, doesn't affect me. Angry, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Disappointed is the word you're looking for. Just yeah, a little, disappointed is uh, a fair. Mm -hmm. Worried. <laughs> I'd say frustrated. Not mad, but more, more frustrated with what I see. What would have been the TikTok equivalent of our, like, generation when we were little? Probably Was there even such a thing? Vine. No, well, Vine wasn't oh, when we were little. Vine but, oh, Vine right. Little. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think when we were little, I don't think there was anything like this. Maybe, like, maybe, like, old meme gifts, perhaps? Like, yeah. like the Hypnotoad yeah. era of shit? Mm. Yeah. I meant more like, not memes, where you create, huh, I don't know. More like you being yeah, like personality driven TV. The uh, closest yeah, I can think of, but it wasn't that popular, is YTMNDs. Do you guys remember that? Oh, Christ, yeah, what did yeah. that stand for again? You're the man now, dog. That's right, you're the man yeah, now, that's, dog. That's that's the closest me. equivalent I can think of for our generation. Uh, the fuck is this? For those of I you who no don't remember, I think the website is down, is like gone now, defunct, but YTMND.com was a website initially started by a guy who put a picture, made a website, and it was a picture of Sean Connery and it was a looping sound clip of Sean Connery going, You're the man now, dog! From the movie Finding Forrester. And eventually that spun off into people who would make their own websites that were just a picture and a looping sound clip. And then YTMD became its own website that would hub those websites. So you would just make the modern version of short content where like yeah. you would put a like an animated gif of Conan O'Brien or a clip it's from a movie the and then you'd put it to like music or a joke sound clip or something and that was it. That was the whole thing. And that everything was like similar. maybe 10 seconds long or shorter mostly. Yeah, it's still up. This, uh, I've yeah, never even that, heard of this, so it clearly wasn't either, but that does, It wasn't, it does it wasn't nearly similar. as popular as, like, Vine and TikTok and all that are, but it, it had its well, place. It was earlier than that, yeah. It was way earlier. This is, like, early 2000s, like, 20 years ago. Man, how naive we were. I think the shortest form of media that I can even remember was just, like, the Nickelodeon shorts in between actual shows. <laughs> Actually like produced Prometheus things, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> made, yeah. Made by studios, <laughs> by people with vision, yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I just don't get any entertainment from watching, like, like short videos like short form you know i don't like either meme videos and stuff it d just doesn't do anything for me i have never seen a tiktok that didn't just disappoint me i can't think of a single one i thought was interesting or worth talking about yeah the, well, well there's, there's been some that's made me laugh but uh, it's not like i would go searching uh or trolling through all the shit just to find those ones i guess mm -hmm. is what i'm saying I think the TikToks that make you laugh are the ones that are like real life shit where somebody like falls yeah. down and hurts themselves or something. Not exactly like a planned TikTok <laughs> skit or something. Oh, oh, yeah, not even no. intentional yeah. comedy. They're just life happening. Yeah. 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 People <laughs> like embarrassing themselves. Yeah. I mean, oh, you God. laugh <laughs> at public, them. <laughs> yeah. Public freakouts are big on TikTok and those really, those <laughs> mm -hmm. get me excited. There was a series of TikToks, I think it was TikToks, that I thought was actually pretty good now that I think about it. It was the guy who drank a bunch of cough syrup and then like stole a Christmas tree from Walmart. Did you see that saga? 
No, I didn't. It was I found it randomly. I don't even remember where, but it was the only time TikTok got me to like watch all of them. And it was some guy, his first one is he drinks a whole bottle of cough syrup and gets fucked up. And then he like starts going into a convenience store and just dancing in the front of it and doing weird shit. And it culminates with him going to a Walmart, picking up a Christmas tree, walking out the front door. And as the employee says, sir, you need to pay for that. And he just starts sprinting through the parking lot. <laughs> and you hear security screaming, drop the tree, bro. <laughs> That's I, awesome. It was a nice little adventure. Like, but but even then, I only liked it because it was a whole story. If you put all of them together, it was like a three minute short film. It wasn't one individual TikTok that I enjoyed. It would have been a much more interesting YouTube video. That's my whole point. Uh. Yeah. Oh well. Can we talk about something different, Charlie? Do you want to talk about Adam and Eve? Yeah, we can absolutely start talking about something very different from TikTok. Adam and Eve's got all the sex toys you'll ever need. <laughs> a robust catalog full of every possible toy that you could imagine on this planet, pretty much. I've used it for a long time. Never fucked myself with one yet, but <laughs> any day I could now. So it's just, you know, why don't you get more into the specifics of it and I can talk about the catalog. Absolutely. I was just told that you were an expert on Adam and Eve, who is the first sponsor of this show. Charlie has given them a wonderful introduction, but I'm going to give you a wonderful offer that goes with it. If you go to adamandeve.com using code DEFENSE, D-E-F-E-N-S-E, -E, you'll get 50% off of one item with free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. Some exclusions are going to apply, but... Code DEFENSE, 50% off of one item and free shipping anywhere in the U.S. and Canada. Charlie, I would love for you to rattle off some of the great items they could look into. Oh, pretty much, like I said, almost anything you can imagine from dildos to ball gags, butt plugs, you name it. I'd also like to explain why the code's DEFENSE, since people are probably confused. It's because when uh, I was doing my early sex toy work, I used them for self-defense tools, so they thought it'd be <laughs> enjoyable to make the code defense, and it's just stuck ever since. So that was that's so why the code is ago. defense. I know it's been like three years. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Well, Adam and Eve keeps it very loose, which is a way that you can keep yourself if you use Adam and Eve. They just want to say code defense, fifty percent off one item, and free shipping U.S. and Canada. Exclusions apply. And then had Charlie give a little rock talk on the stock. But now that he's done that, I can move on to Kaya's favorite sponsor, Express mm -hmm. VPN. Kaya, That's would right. you like to talk about Express VPN? You know what I'm proud of? We just talked about all the algorithmic recommendations. I am so happy when I'm on Twitter or YouTube and the ads I get are completely unrelated to my life. Like I get advertising <laughs> for American lawnmowers and shit. It's beautiful <laughs> because it tells me, oh, these people have no fucking idea where I live, who I am. This is awesome. And it's partially, of course, thanks to ExpressVPN, which I used to watch Better Call Saul yesterday, by the way, the mm -hmm. uh, series finale. Great company. No locks policy, of course, proven in court, by the way, because of an assassination that happened in Turkey, uh, where the <laughs> Turkish government seized their servers and couldn't find any evidence on them. So. Good <laughs> shit. I trust ExpressVPN with my uh, internet activity, which is highly shady at some points, so you can trust them as well. What's our URL, Andrew? Oh, I can tell you not only our URL, but I could also tell you out there to be smart and stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting access to a fraction of the content. You can get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash official. That's use expressvpn.com slash official. And if you do that, you're going to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. You could be That's in some made-up country like Kaya is and wanting is. to watch your Better Call Saul, or you could be wanting to protect your internet data, or you could have a million reasons for a VPN, but ExpressVPN is going to be the one you want to go to with slash official in that URL to get an extra three months for free. And finally, James, would you like to introduce me so I can talk about Manscaped? Oh, hey, uh, Andrew, what, what yeah. do I do about all this James hair that's growing all over me? Oh, I'm it's, glad it's you asked, annoying. James. I'm, I'm glad that you asked. Well, it's 2022. It has been for eight months. It's more 2022 than it isn't by this point. And that means you should have found a convenient, snug, and neat little way to clean up your testicles, your penis, your scrotum, whatever part of your body down there you think needs a little trim. 
And that's why you're going to want to look at Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0. It's going to have a lawnmower 4.0 electric trimmer. It's going to have advanced skin safe technology to reduce cuts. It's going to come equipped with a 4000K LED spotlight that's going to help you see what the hell you're doing. You might want to go real deep with that trimming below the belt. It's going to have some uh, crop preserver, crop reviver to help show off your new self. And if you want to complete the set, you're going to make sure Manscaped threw in their shed travel bag and anti-chafing boxer briefs as free gifts. If you want new balls in 2022, you're going to need them, James, because you're going to show them off at the ball when you travel to manscaped.com for the exclusive offer of 20% off and free shipping with code official. Get 20% off and free shipping on something that's going to clean you up real nice down there at manscaped.com with code official. New year, no pubes in 2022 with Manscaped. 20% off, free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code official. You said that it comes with a 4,000K LED spotlight. How bright it, is that? I'm curious. Blinding. It's quite bright. Yeah. You can guide <laughs> down like oncoming planes. <laughs> this is like a spotlight. <laughs> we do not endorse that, but go nuts. Give Fucking it a James shot. does. James endorses it. <laughs> James is a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, might have to fire James and get Jackson back. <laughs> actually, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good segue. Um, talking about planes, Charlie, how was your week? Yeah, I flew on a plane twice. It's <gasps> no big deal. I'm just kind of like Woo! the strongest man in the world is all. Whoa, that is insane. Was it? Mm -hmm. big man. When was yeah. it? So, so everyone already knows that you're a, a coward and you hate flying and you're scared of it. But how, how long has it been? <laughs> how long has it been since the last time you flew? What was the build up? Six here? years. Wow. Yeah. How long is it been? Six Okay. Yeah, six years was the last time I flew, so sober for six years, and then <laughs> flew on Saturday, and then flew back on Monday. Well, no, how long were you in the air? Oh, two and a half hours there and It's back. not bad. It's not bad. That's like the yeah. shortest amount you could possibly do, I think. I don't think you can get much yeah, under that's like, like two hours. Yeah, baby steps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's something. So what, what routine did you have to go through to get on the plane? Did you have to be like physically carried on and shit? Mm. Nope. I walked in under my own power, had a panic attack under my own power, and <laughs> that was all she wrote. When I just sat there watching a movie. How was the turbulence? It, it wasn't too bad. Like it, it was very smooth on the way back in particular, but it wasn't like a lot of turbulence even on the way there. So was it a lot easier coming back then? Yeah, it was a lot smoother. No, I mean for mm. you. Oh, no, no, I was still just as nervous and scared, but the flight was just overall better. So you think uh, you're still going to have issues in the future with it then? Yeah, I don't plan on doing it again for another six years at least. <laughs> Do you think... All right, so, so let's give the context here. You went uh, to support Moist Esports, who made it to the uh, Grand Finals at Worlds for Rocket League. Wasn't uh, grand finals, but we made it to the world yeah, championship. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, champion Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, you went to support your team, obviously, uh, and then sadly they got eliminated in the quarterfinals, right? It was quarters, right? Yeah, yeah, yep. quarterfinals. Uh, so they tied eighth place. The first day you got there. So do you think if they had gone the distance and won the grand final, you would have been overfilled with such joy that you would uh, continue to fly, or do you think that soured your experience as well? Uh, I was super gutted, but I don't think that had anything to do with the flight, honestly. I, I don't think... That, okay, even if they this. won... Have you at least appreciate or come to appreciate the how much shorter it is than a car ride? Yeah, it's definitely a lot more convenient for, like, time's sake. But the entire week leading up to it, I couldn't sleep at Aww. all like i was just completely fucking miserable so it felt a lot worse in the long run than if i had just driven so you didn't, you didn't decide we... until like the day that you left though from what you told me yeah but i still had that build up the entire time because yeah. i was initially going to leave on thursday so i'd stayed up like all night the night before and most of the night before that like anticipating like i'm just gonna force myself on thursday i couldn't do it so then i went through that whole song and dance again on saturday and then yeah, buckled right. down and did it 
By the way, people in our Discord are now posting GIFs of planes crashing, so thank you very much. <laughs> very, very, very supportive. Pretty, pretty pretty good Lord. <laughs> so if we Assholes. were planning a trip to Japan, say, I don't know, next month, you down? Uh, absolutely not, It's actually. just a 17-hour flight there and back. It's no big deal. You can't yeah, get no, into Japan just... at the moment. Still. That's just one of those things where it's like a I think you under can. no circumstances. <laughs> I've been reading a lot on, on Twitter, like I keep my ears to the ground, and a lot of people are saying that the Japanese are currently more xenophobic than they even usually are, which sounds hysterical. I still want to go <laughs> so bad. So I uh, I actually had a friend uh, visit me a couple weeks ago who lives in Japan, and we talked a lot about possible trips and this and that, and currently... COVID there is really bad, so they're kind of just, like, not thinking about opening borders. Yeah, I've been yeah. tracking it, because, yeah. like, Andrew and I have been talking about going uh, to Japan since, like, two years ago, since just before COVID started, and then that kind of Me too. Plans. Yeah, we all want to yeah. go. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think Charlie also wants to go, he just doesn't want to fly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I mean, fuck, when I, when I was younger, I had this vision of being a giant weeb and going, like, once a month if I had the money. Like, fuck it, but... Oh, well. Yeah, it's not even, it's not even like, Tokyo. Or, uh, yeah, I'd like to visit Tokyo and stuff, but I want to see it all. I want to go, like, around the countryside. Mm -hmm. I want to travel as much as I can yeah. to see it. I ideally want to do the James May trip. There's a special on Amazon, James May, Man in Japan. It's very, very good if anyone's interested in, like, Japan tourism. Uh, it's James May from Top Gear and a whole bunch of British shows. And his itinerary, I think he spends three weeks there, and all he does is he starts at the very top of Japan and does local customs in that region, and then he goes south, and he does local yeah. customs there, and then he goes more south, and he just travels the whole country, and for like two days, just spends time in that area doing the local thing that that area is known for. And it's, it's yeah. fucking awesome. It looks so cool. Another recommendation, we've had him on the show, uh, Chris Broad uh, from right. Abroad in Japan. He, he also does that uh, same kind of thing. So really good content right. there. But yeah, I want to see Japan. It would be nice. Same. And I have a whole itinerary, man. You know what I did though? I fucked myself. So last time I flew, I, so I landed back in Germany and I was like, huh, finally, okay, flying time is over. I'm not going to be flying for a while now. I'm going to go online and look at airplane crash footage and I'm going to look at <laughs> air, airline crash documentaries. And there was one on Netflix. I forget what it's called, but it's about, I think, Boeing. Yeah. What was that one plane yeah. that kept crashing the seven something Max 8? 737 Max. Yeah, the Max 8. The one I Charlie think, was on, right? <laughs> well, they fixed so. it, so it would have been fine. <laughs> Allegedly, they fixed it. And the thing is, I watched this documentary, and Boeing knew about the entire thing. What it was is they added a feature to the cockpit controls, basically, that was... It, uh, it like, automated the hind flaps, whatever those are called. But they didn't want to train the pilots, because that would have been costly. And airline companies would have been reluctant to buy the new upgrade. So they just kind of buried it in a bunch of fucking manuals, and they never actually declared it with the, um... Is it the FDA? FDA? Or the... No, that's for drugs, isn't it? I think the FDA is the federal... Yeah, it's definitely not the FDA. I'm pretty <laughs> yeah, sure it's sorry, the FSA uh, or well, something. FAA. Whatever, F the, whoever is regulating it's, the air, airlines, I guess. Um, so they didn't the declare this, but... Aircraft Academy or something, I don't know. <laughs> I don't fucking know, the YMCA. Anyway, they... A plane crashes, they decide they, they're going to hide the evidence that this was their fault. And other plane crashes, they again hide the evidence and they pretend that, oh no, this uh, this autopilot that just makes the plane nosedive and the pilots don't know how to turn it off. And they didn't know how to turn it off because again, Boeing decided not to train the pilots on how to turn that feature off. So all these pilots, they just fucking crashed straight into the ground. And so now I'm paranoid again because I'm flying next month. Well, and all yeah, of that just shit, all of that knowledge is in my brain. Don't fly new planes, at least for a couple years, like as in like new uh, entries into aircraft. Fly, fly the tried and true ones, like the original 737s, even though they're getting pretty old. Mm. Well, yeah. That's hopefully the plan. I always check on the Which one was it that kept crashing? 737 MAX. MAX what? MAX 8? MAX 10? I think it's MAX 8. MAX 8. Yeah, has to be the MAX 8. Are you yeah. looking up your flight to see what plane you were on? <laughs> no, no, I'm just looking it up to see what's going on with it now. Uh, Did they ever? The FAA, by I, the way, Chad was right. Yeah. I know they. Yeah. I, I know they grounded the entire, um, you know, seven three seven Max eight fleet or whatever 
uh, after, but did they ever let them fly again? I assume they fixed no. the issue and then... No, if I remember right from the documentary, like all the families of the dead people, they sued Boeing. So I think they never were able... I, uh, actually, I'm not sure. That's a, that's a lot of money to just leave on the ground. I think they would have just fixed it and then let them flow, fly again. Let me see. There's a oh, planes 180 under countries out of the 195 had lifted the grounding. What? Oh, that's not a well, good idea. It sounds like it was a training issue as well as maybe just some software changes needed to be made to fix the issue. Well, okay, so here's what actually happened, if I remember correctly. Whenever an airline has uh, does an upgrade to a plane, like even if you so much as just... You take an existing model that is super safe, right? If you swap out the engines for a newer model of engine, I think that's fine. But if you swap out something in the cockpit, then the pilots have to be retrained. That means they have to go through weeks and weeks of training in a simulator. And Boeing Which didn't want that because if uh, the airline companies knew this, they wouldn't buy the new model of plane because they would have to you know, basically uh, give all of their pilots time off to go get training so boeing was like oh no no don't worry there's nothing new in this model it's just same old same old plane you've always been flying don't worry about it so they hit that one change that they made which was that automatic system that controls the flaps in the back of the plane that's yeah. a big and fucking change <laughs> that is a big fucking change and not only that but because also apparently you had like what was the figure i think if you are trained properly you have 13 seconds to switch it off if it malfunctions but they didn't even train people on it so it would just malfunction and make the plane start test. nose diving jesus christ that is your training and in it's the documents field training in the like documents of this new design the boeing engineers even mentions that uh, out of their like tests most people that tested out the new cockpit system or whatever the fuck it is could not react fast enough to counteract the autopilot or whatever it is, I guess the, I think it was called the MCAS. Yeah. Something MCAS. automated system. So yeah, they just buried all of that shit in a bunch of uh, handbooks and avoided the paperwork that they actually had to file. And so they circumvented pilot training and sold this to a bunch of airlines and the planes started crashing. To go back to the original topic though, I do the same thing, Kaya, but I do it before I fly. Like I'll be at the airport reading like about uh, aircraft disasters and, and what to look for just in case in case i can prevent I it before i yeah, read it should help. <laughs> i read blogs by pilots i read because pilots are such cold-blooded people man they're so fucking cool and chill it's where i will find no, any pilot they're glorified I can bus go to drivers. their block huh they're what glorified the bus drivers well, that's not the point. My point is more so you can go to any like private blog of a pilot and he'll be talking about turbulence like it's fucking nothing. They'll be like, yeah, my plane shook around like, you know, I was upside down once. It's fine. <laughs> I can't say, are you being serious, Jackson, or, or was that just a joke? I actually can't tell. No, they are pretty much glorified bus drivers in the sense that, yeah, there's, there's a lot of training there, but it's also most of it is automated. They just sit there for most of the flight. Yeah, but they still have to go through well, a ton of training. That's a terrible take. That's just an awful take, top to bottom. Why? Have you looked into anything regarding aviation, like from a like a piloting perspective? Well, uh, I mean, think about to, it this not way, to brag Jackson. or anything, but I played a little bit of Microsoft Flight Simulator. No, Jackson's <laughs> wrong. Uh, Jackson's wrong because they're less than bus drivers. Autopilot does all the work. They're basically useless and do nothing. We can't even have uh, like yeah, buses don't autopilot have autopilot. doesn't even exactly. Autopilot doesn't even properly work in cars yet. Like I, I don't yeah, know why you exactly. assume that it's doing the heavy lifting in planes currently. <laughs> No, no, trust me. Pilots don't do anything. They're just they're just glorified button pushers. They they fucking flip a switch and then they kick their feet up and they go, ah, oh, just gonna relax <laughs> for this flight. Yeah. Like they a go to sleep. Washington in flight, just arrives they take drunk a nap. and puts on a sleep mask. <laughs> they do their laundry in the little private plane bathroom for the pilots. <laughs> like it's it's nothing. I could be a pilot today. I just have to walk in with a hat. It's fine. They, they, have, the a little, they have a little pilot they have a little pilot bedroom where they go to sleep during the flight. Yeah. They bring cards, they sing songs, they bring a guitar. Like, they just have a party while we're <laughs> sitting there cramped in the cramped in the back. Yeah. Have you seen have you seen the pilot bedrooms on the planes? Mm, no. They're so bad. It's, it looks so miserable sleeping there. 
It's just like a little mattress in a little hole in the roof. I mean, that's better than what the people in economy get. I don't, what do you want? Like a st hotel suite? Yeah. Well, first class gets hotel suites. They're not Nowadays. first class. They're just a pilot. They should yeah, be. They're, they're just the pilot. Their they're not very their important. Hands. Yeah, they but they, that's why there's two. The one, I assume, one sleeps and then the other one takes over and then vice versa. But it's not like either one's job to just sleep through the entire flight. Well, one sleeps and the other one just sits there staring at the buttons while the plane flies itself. I assume they take turns. I don't know. Yeah, they do. They do. That's the whole point. And on longer yeah. flights, like international flights, they can have three. It's, it's so you don't have one person in charge of the entire plane. You know, every plane flight, at least commercial plane flight, had to have like, uh, I think it was four people flying originally. It, there had to be like four people, or maybe it was three, but four or three in the cockpit. Uh, that There needed to be a man always uh, manning the, commu not communications, That's the radar. That's right. A man always had to man it. A woman <laughs> could never man it. That wouldn't make sense. There was always someone at the, um, the radar station on the thing. So there were, there were a lot more people in the cockpit originally, but now it's so automated, only one person needs to be in there at any given time. No one needs to be in there. They could run in, push the button, and run out before the door closes like a garage. The only thing the pilot does in the cockpit is give uh, soothing words of encouragement to the autopilot system. <laughs> Cheers Motivate, it on. <laughs> motivates it. You can do it. Can you imagine if we got to that point sure. where the pilot's only job was to push <laughs> autopilot buttons and then, like, charge it if it got low? Like, that's it. He just sits there, looks at the dials, does nothing. It just they, kind of, they honestly kind of do. <laughs> like, takeoff and landing is not automated at all. That's, like, where most of the actual uh, piloting comes in. But um, they're really there for emergencies during actual traversal. I mean, good, yeah, I still want them there for emergencies. Yeah, well, they yeah, still do obviously. a lot. I will still, any day of the week, I don't even know I'll how it's an argument that pilots don't do enough, <laughs> like they do a ton. <laughs> yeah, like, I, it's a, I'm it's with Charlie skill. on this oh, yeah, one, it's and obviously also, a skill. I would still, in this day and age, I would still trust a human way more over the fucking automated systems that just keep crashing, apparently. Well, they like don't. Doesn't know There's way more successful... Properly. It, it was one. It was one plane system yeah. that fucked up one plane line, I but think, mostly automation. Is uh, and good all it on took planes. is one, right? All it took is for one fucking programmer at Boeing to make one mistake and one bureaucrat at that company to hide that mistake for what hundreds of people to die. No thanks. Mm -hmm. Now that's that's a really good argument because all it took for an entire plane to crash into a mountain was for a pilot to have a little boy steer it. That was also one case out of fucking 100 years worth of aviation. So yeah, for all of those automated. instances. Yeah. yeah. Nonetheless, it happens. I would still trust a human over that fucking it, system. That's actually, it happened twice, though, with the automated system. Well, there's been more than one situation of a pilot crash as well. computer pilot yeah, crashes. But, not, but the one you cited was a human being having a bad day purposely crashing the plane. No, that's different. And I'm sure that's happened that's more than totally once That's a totally different well. incident. The human being having a bad day was like, I hate everyone, I'm going to kill myself and bring the pilot with it. The one I'm talking about is there was a plane back in the uh, 70s, oh, I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, but remember he had his one. little nephew with him and he was like, hey, do you want to fly the plane haha ha, you're a big boy and the kid literally just nosedived the plane and killed everyone <laughs> holy <laughs> fuck what you never yeah, heard of that i just i just no. saw this one on reddit recently they had the actual like uh flight reconstruction they showed like the spiral of the plane and like the comms and stuff during it and it was insane dude they, yeah. they actually let this like seven-year-old kid uh fly the plane for a bit and he like stalled it so he, he like lifted yeah. it too much where the engine stalled and they couldn't Aero Aero flight, 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 flight 593. Yeah. 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 It was a Russian flight uh, going to Hong Kong. And there was no evidence of technical malfunction. But they found out that the captain had his 12-year-old daughter and 16-year-old son in the cockpit. And basically what they think happened was the son had disengaged the autopilot and fucked with the controls. And the plane just See? fucking crashed. <laughs> Human See, error. Charlie? Yeah. It's all what autopilot. You see? You're not supposed to let your teenage kids at the fucking control. No, but it was going fine on autopilot. But a yeah, human was, pilot yeah. would. You, they had to kill the autopilot. They had to kill the autopilot. The bus driver had to take never, over. Never, ever, ever it's let anyone driver. touch the plane like that. <laughs> but a human would. It's these goddamn bus drivers. Yeah. <laughs> Computers are better. They're always better in every instance. You guys are jerks. I bet. 
pilots are good people and they train hard. Oh, talking about computers being better. That's a good segue. Have you guys seen recently? So um, a lot of people are now getting the Dolly AI invitations uh, sent out to them. Oh, like, yeah. to I still have it. access. I'm fucking tight. And I've been seeing more and more artists on the internet melt down over this and journalists mm-hmm. too. And I have to say, I fucking love it. I fucking love it. These people were such smug bastards back when, like, up to even five years ago when the first talk started about, like, truckers and cashiers getting automated out of existence and they weren't happy about it. You guys remember that? Yeah. And the prevailing, uh, like, attitude towards us was a smug, oh, learn to code. Your profession is outdated and obsolete. Well, that was, you that fucking was journalists. Peasants. It was, that was that journalists. Was, that was journalists. That was not truckers. <laughs> I know. <laughs> truckers are saying learn to code. No, 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 no one was saying that to truckers. They oh, were saying right. that to journalists. Right. Yeah. No, no, tell no, the truckers okay, to code. No, 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 no. no <laughs> you're, you're, you're robot trucks. <laughs> no, Charlie, you have this wrong. You have the timeline wrong. Journalists said this to truckers. Just learn to code, you fucking peasant bitch. And to cashiers. Like, technology is the future, you loser. And people got mad at this. And then eventually, when journalists got laid off at, like, the Huffington Post and shit, then people to troll them said, oh, why don't you learn to code now? Maybe your profession really? is obsolete too. Yeah, they just turned it back on them. And it got to the point actually where journalists started to pull strings at Twitter and they had people banned for telling them learn to code. That's how that fucking meme started. It was originally a thing that journalists um, told truckers and shit. And now, well, the right. shoe's yeah, on the wow, other I foot. It, up. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't just truckers. It, it wasn't just them. It was coal miners as well. So <laughs> miners, Everything, every tr- profession. Yeah. Every, like... <laughs> Okay. They they wow. mocked they <laughs> mocked all of these people who did like physical labor jobs like again yeah. like standing at a cash register or driving a car well, or fucking vehicle coal of any mining sort. for fifty years and you're told by some like snot nosed <laughs> fucking they even journalist to go twat. code right they, yeah. they even went as far as to publish articles on November eighteenth twenty fifteen Wired published can you teach can I, can you teach a coal miner to code oh fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> right and that's, that's so how mean. it turned around charlie it's people were mad at the journalists and at the time journalists and many people in various fields like journalism um digital arts they were like oh no computer is ever gonna take our jobs coders too by the way that's not gonna happen to us we're the we're the upper class we're the laptop class and lo and behold dolly comes around and now i'm seeing the fucking artists and journalists kind of melting down because now we have these ais that can write articles so uh, and make uh, art that is pretty professional looking so their asses are on fire they're very unhappy let me scroll through our topics here i don't think like tweets. like i think dolly will only replace concept artists and not even mm-hmm. good ones it's just going to be like decent concept art for projects i don't think it's ever going to replace like a high quality artist i think a, it will eventually man if this is the beginning. a computer a computer will mm. also never fully replicate a personality like if you if you have a song no, 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 made no, no, by no. a computer it could sound good but would a computer really be able to replicate like the way that me, the musician performs it probably yes. not well, no, no, they can they can do their own facsimile of it. Like you have Hatsune Miku and shit, but even those are pre-programmed. Like, yeah, they can perform the song, but there's going to be nuances and things to it and ways that they vary it between yeah, performances. Andrew, this is cope. Uh, this is cope. That that would have fl- like that argument flies ten years ago. Look at what I just posted in our channel there in the chat. Yeah. That art is better than what ninety nine percent of artists can do, and that's from a yeah, but that's visual art. There's a difference. I, I, but you want AI Andrew, to there's dance already for you? Musical AI that's already uh, progressing. Like, are you telling me right. that ten years from now, two decades from now, it's gonna be unable to make a Nirvana song, please, or a rap I song? I didn't. I didn't Come remotely on. say that. What are you talking about? There's a difference in <laughs> performance and personality, not the actual work. Yeah, you but can, I think it'll be indistinguishable. I don't think you'll be able to distinguish like spirit or um, you know, the, the sense of style through that. I, I think Damn. I think if you this take a nuts. band, I think if you take a band, let's say you take like ACDC, just a random band, and then you take an AI robot that has been programmed to perfectly play their music, I think there's going to be differences the robot could never recreate, whether it's like mistakes or different ways of they, they express it. Maybe they like repeat a part that's really getting the crowd going. There's things that an AI is really realistically never going to pick up, you know? Granted, the actual work could be replicated to the same degree. You could write the same songs that ACDC would and probably perform them as technically well, but I think there's a level of emotion or performance or personality that's not going to come through you know what i'm saying 
Uh, I think in the future you're gonna listen to songs, and if nobody told you, you couldn't tell the difference yeah. if it was a human. I mean, or a that robot. I agree. I totally agree with that point. Yeah, but I don't think that robots will replace art. I think it will run alongside it in terms of professional settings, like oh, I need a concept artist or I need well, a I, business idea that I'm will be replaced. Saying, yes. Yeah, that stuff. You know the. Yeah. Like again, if you're writing an art, if you're like the, I don't know, some fucking outlet, like the New York Post, why would you pay an artist 20 yeah. bucks a pop to make article headers for you if you can just pay 15 bucks a month for exactly. Dolly and have it automatically created for you? Or concept art, like this is going mm -hmm. to put a lot of people on Fiverr out of a business. And True. concept artists, again, like Hopefully. you said. Hopefully. Fiverr's pretty hit or miss, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be honest. I love and Fiverr. Just, I use it's it not a even lot. artists. I don't, I don't really have anything against artists except how fucking smug they are and how like entitled they sound right now that they thought they would be immune to automation i want this to happen to journalists what was it what was it open gp3 or whatever the fuck that text ai mm -hmm. is that is going to be writing articles soon again why should kotaku pay you 100 bucks per article just for yeah. you to cry and bitch about yeah. the last of us 2 or whatever when they can just punch it into an ai and have again have it spit out 10 paragraphs if it's it's already a competitive field as well. It's already a competitive field where it's hard to get a job. It's it's definitely going to make it harder. If it's consistent, I absolutely want it. Because like on the subject of Fiverr, I do love Fiverr. I do use it a lot. But sometimes, every now and then, you, you get something pretty shitty. Like you just, it's not what you wanted at all. That's uh, odd, you baby. Know. If you exactly that art's always going to have that risk of oh are they going to be able to deliver what I want am I paying for what or you know is what I got what I paid for etc but if you have an AI and you can look at it and say this is exactly what it'll make you this is the exact level of proficiency you'll get yeah I'd love to take advantage of that for a lot of projects that'd be I'd great be free. I, I am blown away by this one this is called stable diffusion I've never heard of it, heard of it before this is the one you linked Kaya this is absolutely nuts so. What it does is it looks like it's like analyzed a ton of very popular artist styles like uh, like Junji Ito, for example, and it's able to recreate user generated images in that style that you select. So it does yeah. it like almost flawlessly. This is wild. It is very good. By the way, you can try like if you don't have Dolly access yet, there is another AI that is more artistic called Mid Journey, and they have a Discord where you can join and try it out today if you want. Um, I'd love to try out Stable Diffusion. Uh, honestly, I I'd love to try and uh, I've had a good idea for AI driven art project that I think would be really enjoyable to do on stream, but I didn't get into Dolly. So I I'm going to need a, a secondary here and Stable Diffusion is looking hot. Uh, I mean, I can hook you up with my friend if you want, he has access. But anyway, the point is, so these people are so fucking angry. Let me read these tweets to you. So one of these artists says, A new AI image generator appears to be capable of making art that looks 100% human-made. As an artist, I am extremely concerned. Oh, are you? And then somebody <laughs> called out his hypocrisy because a couple of months ago he was praising this fucking technology. And he replies to this, he says, it is exciting technology, but it needs to have proper regulations and ethical considerations. If artists want to opt in for their art to be used for the AI is trained on stock photos, that's not really as much of an issue. So I, I have a question. Were uh, truckers asked for their opt-in opinion if they want to be automated out of existence? Were cashiers, ca uh, cashiers consulted? I don't remember that happening. I can see why it's so frustrating. I, I know you I don't can, like typical artist attitude, but I totally get where they're coming I from. Can like this. Same. I, I absolutely see where they're coming mm -hmm. from. This has to be very, very frustrating. Nonetheless, asshole, you're down here with the rest of us. I think what you do I isn't special or immune to this. I think the difference in the basis for their argument is art is personalized, whereas for the most part, truck driving and things like that are not to the same level remotely. So if you have a truck that needs to be driven, you get a hundred different workers to drive it. They're going to do the same job for the most part. That which doesn't is why make it more valuable to society or anything like that. No, it make no, you no, no. I don't know. I'm not saying that part at all. But what I'm saying is they would get more defensive because if you replace the truck drivers with a machine, truck gets driven the same way no matter what. doesn't matter. But if you replace someone's art with a machine, a lot of artists have an art style they believe is wholly unique to them. So if you have a robot that says, no, I can do it, it's like you've been like specifically replaced. You, you can still I mean? practice, you can still, like, do art, 
even if there is automation there. All this is going to curtail True, is your why, employment ability. But why would I pay the artist when I can just use the robot? Well, that's what I mean. Well, it's, obviously, it's, it's going to oh. affect how much money you can make, but you can still do art. It doesn't like and curtail I, your freedoms. I can think of a lot of reasons why you would. Let's say even the AI art's better than whatever artist you want to hire. You can communicate with a person far better than you can communicate ideas with the, the text here. You can get across what you want better to a person who could probably capture your vision closer than what the AI could do. Oh yeah, I'm not I'm not totally like arguing for their side. I'm just saying I see their side of the argument. I get what their concerns are. That's all. Yeah, I get I get on both ends, but also I agree with Kaya that these there's a lot of people that are complaining right now that were originally well, it's hypocritical. They were originally mm -hmm. for it in the case of other uh, professions. That, and they so were totally it, on it board with cathartic. the shit. They yeah. were super on board with this so, shit when it was happening to other people. So here's the real question, the honest to God question. How long until we've created an art generating AI that produces nothing but clip TikTok videos with squish videos? <laughs> and we literally like have people, I, we I'm literally sure have TikTok's people. Doing that. Well, no, here's the thing. How long until TikTok is nothing but automated AI generated video content to the point where regular humans cannot keep up and there's no point in them making anything. That's gonna be like one of the first things that happens. I think <laughs> yeah, human made so stuff. Too. I think human made stuff is going to become like the handmade, you know? You know how you see like handmade soap or handmade chair or handmade uh, this yeah, or handmade yeah. watch? It's, you're gonna be like, oh, this art was human made, handmade. You're going to pay automated. a premium for but, it. But not yeah. even, because you're going to go on TikTok and you're going to go, I'm going to search a handmade wooden chair. That sounds cool. And you'll have a text to speech video. Watch this man make a wooden chair by hand. And it'll be a robot that just Google searched that term and slapped a squish video on it. No human intervention whatsoever. And that'll yeah, be the smartest right, machine you know of our what? time, Andrew. I, I'm not going to be a hypocrite about this. At some point, I'm sure that we will also be made obsolete. Fucking podcasting Damn, is not a difficult job. It. Yep. It's like... By the way, this is a good thing too, so imagine if someone makes a really good voice synthesis AI, finally, where you can't even tell that it's fake, and I'm sure there's so many people out there, young people maybe, who have a great sense of humor, they're comedic geniuses, but they have a really shitty voice, maybe they have a stutter, maybe they have a really <laughs> nasal voice that doesn't lend itself to podcasting, maybe they can just type in their jokes, yep. and have well, a really good they can really do that already, they've been able to do that for the last decade with Microsoft Sam. Our podcast, well, yeah. oh, that's a terrible voice, yeah. not Microsoft yeah, Sam. Or... Our fucking podcast is already. Our podcast is already halfway there. Charlie and I are already on the YouTuber deep fake voice AI. Now we just need True, Kaya yeah. and Jackson, and then we're done. True, James. those deep fake voices are getting pretty good. They're getting really they fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> just put someone out there listening. Put Kaya and Jackson in that database, and then we won't have to do James. any episodes ever again. <laughs> wait, wait, yeah, you can set a new Patreon tier for ten dollars. You can write episodes for <laughs> us. <laughs> Whenever That'd we need to awesome. take a vacation, I, I still, I still want to do the thing. I think I pitched it a long time ago. Where one episode, maybe for April Fools, we deep fake the entire thing. Like we write what we yeah. would say and talk about but all of our dialogue is deep fakes of us i think that'd be amazing i well, don't think I, I, would even I, was, tell. I was talking to kaya maybe a few weeks ago because i got access to one of the um chat uh, the chat ais i'm not sure which one now but i got access to one of them and was able to generate a podcast script and yeah it was rough around the edges but there was still some funny moments in there <laughs> that made me oh, yeah, laugh. I remember yeah there was a text ai open some open ai isn't it yeah open so mm -hmm. one of them Anyway, yeah, we, sh so we I, should absolutely. I think we can get that. We, we should. That. We should get the the AIs, train them, do whatever we have to do, get a full script for a podcast, and then have all of our voices synthesized for it, and just put it out every week, and just roll <laughs> in the money. <laughs> easy money. <laughs> It's like this yeah. isn't already easy money. Well, then we, we could put out daily. Easier. <laughs> well, then we could put out daily episodes every single oh, day. I'm the only human input is Andrew reading the ads. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, oh. we can't replace that. It's impossible. Oh, thank you. Read ads. Oh. Thank you. I would do it. This is so fucking funny to me. Just the way their hairs are on fire. The way they're yeah. realizing that they're no fucking better than truckers. The people that they look down on. It's amazing. Eventually, eventually we'll reach the technology singularity where it becomes a self-sustaining bubble of its own machinations and all of us will just give up on the internet and go outside and never use it again. 
one day. I mean, I wish. It's If everything was automated, this wouldn't be a problem. Then we would finally be free. Let all the robot slaves do all this shit. Exactly. We'll have a Matrix I, animated... C uh, what is it? Animatrix scenario. I really look forward to the day where everything's automated. That just means that, like, everything can run all the time. Like, I can't count the amount of times throughout my life where it'd be super fucking convenient to, like, go somewhere, but it's closed. Yep. And obviously it's closed because human workers can't work 24 hours a day. I, I right? can't yeah. fucking stand that shit, man. I, I work nights. I'm just most productive at night, so I'm regularly up till, like, 5 in the morning. And the amount of times... Right, yeah. Amount of times it'll be like one, two in the morning, and I'm like, I'm fucking starving. I'm really productive. I want to just eat a snack, keep working. Same. So I go to I go to a gas station. It's closed due to understaffing. I go to another one, closed due to understaffing. I go to a fast food restaurant. It's the only one open, and there's twelve people in line. What the <laughs> fuck? I'm not gonna wait I forty-five minutes. Everywhere was open like twenty-four-seven. And even every, then, like fast food restaurant was twenty four seven in America. No, it, no, 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 only no. some. Not even close. And even then, because it's understaffed and underpopulated and under everything, they usually give you the shittiest food. It, like, like obviously, fast food's not going to be quality, but there's a big difference in when you get a burrito at six p.m. versus two in the morning. You know, I have the opposite, uh, re like. Uh, experience like every time I've gone to fast food restaurants at like 2 a.m. it's been the most incredible food ever granted I'm usually drunk at that drunk, point or something yeah. mm -hmm. That's, but it's just drunk but oh, no but no also I've gone there when I'm not drunk and it's been pretty good and I think it's because the food is cooked as soon as you show up like it's cooked when when you're I think ready it's for you're it drunk, is I gotta be honest well, I'm not, I'm not drunk in this situation that I'm talking about or the, the few that I'm thinking about. It's just a universal experience for me that it's been good, better food at that time. I don't that's know. A good, that's a good related question for uh, when you guys drank or those who do still drink. Do you have a go-to drunk food? No. Uh, burritos. <laughs> yeah, burritos. For from, me. from where? Anywhere specific? From Charles Kitchen, baby. Oh, big man. Anything that's meat. Well, I think when you're mm -hmm. drunk specifically, you crave carbs. Doesn't your body crave carbs for some reason? I think so. No, I, I don't think so. I think it's just carbs are the tastiest foods we have. Like, they're just yeah. so rich, <laughs> yeah. usually. I, that might I, be specifically, true. I specifically remember when I used to drink, my go-to, because it was also open late, was the chili cheese fries at Checkers. They oh, what an interesting choice. I know. I don't know how it started. I think some of my friends got me on them, and I just kept going there when I was drunk. And let me tell you, when you're drunk, those are the tastiest, most amazing, delicious things on the planet. When you're sober, they are the greasiest, nastiest piles of shit I've ever eaten. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a secret key you have to put in. You have to be drunk. Jackson? Or James? No, excuse I'm me. hungry. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't have any particular thing that I used to go to. There's a place in uh, the city nearby called pa uh, Pancake Manor, and they just they do like the greasiest food, and they're open twenty four seven. So I would always go down there when I'm in the city uh, for a late night snack because I can't mm -hmm. fucking stand McDonald's usually. Uh, so they were pretty good, but there was no like chili cheese fries or anything like that. It was just pancakes. <laughs> oh, so. well, that's good too. A lot of people do like IHOP yeah, and good. shit when they're drunk. Yeah. Denny's. Pancakes are good. Yeah. yeah. I remember one time at 3 a.m. I was coming back from a uh, a thing with some friends and we stopped in at Pancake Manor. They all got like pancakes and shit and I got a full like uh, a massive steak from Pancake Manor and they thought it was the craziest thing ever. But it was just <laughs> a steak. It was good. Steak is so good. I, I told this to I Jackson I think a while ago, but... Whenever I go to a new restaurant that I've never been to before, I don't give a shit what kind of a restaurant it is and what dishes it prides itself on. I will order a steak and I will judge them on the steak. That's my bar minimum. If you that's can't make so a steak that's right, so fucked up. I don't give a shit. If you can't make a steak, you're not a real restaurant and you should be shut down by the government. <laughs> Are you the kind of guy to go to like Red Lobster and be like, yes, I'll have the steak. Yes. Well, we don't have a Red Lobster here. I just mean like no, not like chain restaurants. Uh, hmm. Just like a regular, I don't know, mom and pop restaurant, I guess. But yeah, I, steak is my favorite. I love eating steak. Yeah, and if you fuck same. up steak, then sorry, I can't really trust the rest of your menu. <laughs> I agree no, with I that, but steak. you gotta you gotta know like where to expect good steak from as well. Well, yeah, like, I wouldn't I wouldn't go to but like I'm, a shitty cafe always, or something and order the steak. Only pancake. Well, yeah, of course, but still, you know, it's I I don't go out of my way to seek shitty places. <laughs> Ah, yummy. Yeah, I'm hungry now. 
Yeah, me too. I'm I'm super fucking hungry. We should probably wrap and get some grub. Let's let's wrap. Thanks everyone for listening to this week's episode. Appreciate it a lot. Uh, Patreon.com slash the official podcast. I'm uploading a bonus episode right now. Also on Patreon, uh, on our Discord, Patreon Discord, we're doing a games night uh, at some point in the future. Within the next week, uh, it'll probably just be me and Kaya. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'll probably just be me and Kaya playing some four guys. Um, so join up now and come hang out. It's a fun time. Alrighty. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Thanks guys. Thank Thanks you. Everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.